Let's uh, get more on Amazon in our Closing Bell Exchange today. With us, Robert Luna from SureVest Wealth Management, who's a shareholder. Paul Dietrich from Fairfax Global Markets. Stephen Sarge Guilfoyle from TheStreet.com and Sarge 986 LLC. There, I said it. And our own Rick Santelli is at the CME in Chicago as well. Robert, uh, what are you, I mean, you must be a happy shareholder. Uh, do you worry that it's overextended, overvalued, or, you know, what, what do you, what, how do you assess Amazon right now? Yeah, I mean, Bill, you punch me in the nose if I ever complain about a 40% gain on a stock that we've held for the last year. So definitely a happy shareholder. Um, but, you know, this is just such a dominating company. I think Kelly was saying they can create their own conglomerates. You know, they're playing a larger and larger role in people's daily lives. And there's just such an efficient company. You know, if you look at uh, the Internet of Things, they were talking this morning about a potential deal with Dish Network to really start leveraging that platform. And if you're somebody like Procter & Gamble, imagine the value of when your last Gillette uh, razor blades down to one, that Amazon being able to ship that directly to your door. Nobody has that ability to monetize the Internet of Things or any of this other information that's being gathered in the cloud like Amazon right now. And for a half a trillion dollar company still growing at over 20 percent, it's hard not to own a stock like this in your portfolio. Having right. said that, though, you sold it last week, Sarge. Yeah, I sold. I sold a few stocks I like. I sold Amazon. I sold Walmart. <laughs> I sold Caterpillar. These names all hit my target prices. Uh, it's strictly discipline. I like all three names. I will buy all three back when they get to prices where I want to buy them again. I do think Amazon's going to a thousand dollars. I do think Apple's going to a trillion dollars. I mean. Things are moving in the right direction. First, we have to deal with this 2400 level on the S&P, which has become a stone wall of resistance. Are we as far as political uncertainty and macroeconomic uncertainty will take us? Yeah. Quite possibly. Paul, I feel like you're kind of a, the person on the side of the room with your arms folded, just looking at everybody in these, these big cap tech stocks and just saying, it's crazy out there, but, but is it, I mean, has it gotten to the sort of 99 era craziness for you or? No. Uh, as a value guy, As, a, as a value stock? stock investor, I can't buy any stock that's selling for a P.E. of 183 times its annual earnings. Which one and, is that? Uh, Amazon. Okay. Uh, it's trailing. Uh, it's got 86 going forward. But I think what investors have to think about is that for the last two years, these tech stocks have, have have gone up enormously and have, have been a, a large part of the S&P's price performance. Will we have a trend where we go, uh, go away from the tech stocks? And my thought is, is that once the corporate tax uh, reform comes about and we see taxes go from 35 percent down to 15 percent, tech companies historically have paid lower taxes because of overseas so earnings and things relative. like that. Yeah. And I think investors will start looking at other sectors because there's going to be a huge earnings bubble once that happens. Having said that, though, Paul, I mean, you're a value player, but you like Apple, I which has Apple. also had a huge run up. Here. It's actually had a, a higher run up than uh, Amazon, Amazon, but it's trading at a 14 point eight P.E. as opposed to 183 uh, P.E. Uh, it has a much larger return on equity than Amazon does. It pays a dividend, which Amazon doesn't do. Uh, I mean, I would much rather own that. I'll tell you, from the retail section, Walmart is the only company that I think can compete with Amazon uh, on the retail thing. It's bringing in its own prime. Its prices are cheaper than Amazon. It's the only company can compete. It's selling for 18 times uh, PE yeah. as opposed to 183. Now, I, I realize the cloud stuff is very right. important for Amazon, right. but I'd rather have Walmart and Apple. All right. Uh, Mr. Santelli, you know, kind of stepping back from all of this, how do things look today for you? Whether we're talking about Treasury yields, we're talking about the U.S. dollar. It, it feels like people are kind of maybe starting to get back on the Trump train here a little bit. Well, you know, it's funny you mention that, Kelly, because I always try to scrutinize the markets to see any type of response that I could peg as, as, poss as much as possible to an event or a political event or a speech. And today, when Budget Director Mulvaney was talking, it's pretty hard not to notice that yields rose a bit, a dollar index firmed up a bit. I find that unusual of all the things for the market to pay attention to. Uh, to me, it was more a compliment to Mr. Mulvaney's uh, succinct presentation 
presentation. I'm not sure it was necessarily the content, but nonetheless, I totally agree with you. And now that the NASDAQ's up, what, 14%, uh, the S&P up 7%, we're starting to get in territory where I would think if it's possible at this late stage, you're actually going to start to see more momentum. With respect to Treasuries, you know, yields were up several basis points. We're knocking on the door for 230, which was the bottom of that range that we had for most of 2017. But I think the short end is notable here with the two year back over uh, 130. Uh, a great auction. You know, we last cycle threes, tens, and thirties, D, D, and D. Today we started right. out with a, an A minus on the two year. Maybe it was because that sell off I mentioned was viewed as a concession. So the lasting ability of the market to keep the yields close to 230 for tens and maybe more importantly, see how the five year note auction goes may give us some more clues. Uh, Sarge, you mentioned 2,400 on the, on the S&P. How deep a line is that in the sand right now for you? Well, you know, Paul made a good point before. All right, the Trump trade is not priced in here at all, uh, except for defense and aerospace. If that should change, the money's got to come from somewhere. It will come from technology, and they will rotate into small caps, into transports, and back into financials. So we know where they're going to go. We know where it's going to come from. We just need some more political certainty and a little better macro. But I asked about 2,400 on the S&P. Okay. <laughs> if, if you give me 2,405 and we get a technical bounce off that level, I'll give you 2,465 by the third quarter. Ooh. Okay. Well, that's what I was after there. There you go. And that's Thank if he doesn't guys. have to punch Robert Luna in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What was that again, Robert, if you're upset, if, you, if you're not grateful for the 40% 40 40 gain? 40% gain. gain in one year. All right. Yeah. Take it when you can. Thank oh, you, guys. Appreciate your thoughts on today's market action. Thank you all. Thank you. About 45